So what's Ubuntu Core and what can it offer for those new challenges and also for the classical ones that we have introduced so far? Okay, the first important thing that we must keep in mind is that Ubuntu Core is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is one of the most popular distributions among developers, so these are very good news for them. We know that familiarity brings productivity, which in turn brings success and reduced time to market, which in turn brings more developers for cross-platform development. So what we have done is to create a lightweight cross version of Ubuntu, removing all the unnecessary packages, keeping it simple, constrained and secure. The second important thing to note is that Ubuntu Core is an operating system fully built from snaps. Most of you surely know about what snaps are, but just in case, I will describe briefly the architecture later on, because I think it is very important to understand clearly the fundamentals of Ubuntu Core and snaps. As an example, with a simple manifest file indicating the platform and your application packages, you can generate a ready-to-go for production Ubuntu Core image. The whole process of image generation, device programming and onboarding has been designed for optimum performance as an enterprise-grade solution targeted for production at mass scale with minimum human interaction. As we have introduced earlier, operations expenses are critical. Forgetting about operations can ruin a good product and a great business. It is very, very important to have them in mind since the very beginning of the design of a product security or application upgrades, but also device recovery or configuration backups are some examples of critical field operations. All of them must be fast and reliable. Think on a fleet of devices and the waste of money, which means the maintenance of all of them. Visualize a massive upgrade. If it is not secure or reliable enough, it could eventually fail in a percentage of devices. What what would mean to send a technician, for instance, which is usually expensive. Think on the time spent during those upgrades if they are not unattended and fast. Everything is critical and costs money. And now visualize a system with the capability of self-healing and recovering to a known point or which allows you to enter a recovery mode at any time. That's Ubuntu Core. It's a platform designed for, from first boot to be the most secure platform for connected devices. Those fleets of devices will have to be on the field for many years, and so the whole operating system and platforms must be designed for dealing with that. That's why Canonical offers long-term support, LTS, services for up to 10 years, allowing Ubuntu Core users to focus on application development and leaving us to handle the rest. So, what are SNAPs? Snaps are containerized software packages which are bundled along with their dependencies and that are isolated from other packages through interfaces. They can be both fully contained and immutable or not. From an Ubuntu core perspective, they are always strictly confined, which means that a snap is not capable of modifying the rest of the snaps or the system. In a nutshell, snaps are born for security. They will share a layer of core or base snap, which holds the execution environment inside which the applications run. It also serves as the root file system for Ubuntu core images. It is important to emphasize that even the kernel is a snap in Ubuntu core. Classic distributions architecture are based on packages, which simply interrelate with each other, but have full access to the full file system, with the appropriate permissions, of course. In Ubuntu Core, we changed that paradigm, creating a bottom-up approach and full isolation between snaps apart from the interfaces. This delivers strong resiliency and better security. Transactional upgrades are one of the most important features of snaps, but before digging into that, I think it is relevant to show briefly how snaps deal with versioning. A channel identifies a specific release. Every channel name has a track, a risk level, and an optional branch. The track indicates the major software release being tracked. The risk identifies the maturity or stability of the release. 
And the optional branch is typically used for development purposes, for trying a specific feature, for instance. There is always a default track if none is specified. Updates are either pushed automatically from the store or requested on demand from the device. Upgrades are in inherently secure as the original packages binary and data are kept unt until the new release is installed. If the upgrade process fails or the new service doesn't start or breaks the system, an automatic rollback is performed. Snaps are compressed, which allows optimization in bandwidth and time. But additionally, during upgrades, only delta data is between versions is transferred, which makes it optimum for limited connectivity scenarios. So wrapping up, why should we use snaps? Because they are containerized isolated applications, which allow secure and transactional updates and simplify operations and improve security. We now have a clearer view of what Ubuntu Core is, so let, let's take a closer look at what Ubuntu Core 20 offers. Since the release of Ubuntu Core 18, we started working on improvements. Following Ubuntu Core philosophy, we defined two strategic goals for Ubuntu Core 20. Adding even more security improvements and features and continuing simplifying operations. So, apart from other minor changes, the three core features included in Ubuntu Core 20 have been a recovery mode targeted to improve operations and full disk encryption and secure boot with the purpose of improving security. Having to manually repair an IoT device in the field can often exceed the cost of the device itself. Dispatching an operator to a remote location to perform maintenance or an intervention may incur significant costs. Depending on distance to the site and accessibility of devices and so on, it can be huge. Furthermore, the resulting downtime may cause additional losses, even more so if the device is mission critical. So, a reliable device recovery system is essential to help avoid these costs and undesired problems. Device recovery in the field should be then low-touch. IoT devices may be deployed at a very large scale with hundreds or even thousands of devices in a fleet. So automation and remote access are key for low-touch maintenance. Basic and repetitive maintenance actions can be performed autonomously by the operating system. This frees up device operators from performing simple maintenance tasks repeatedly on a large number of devices, which definitely saves a lot of money. In doing this, only complex maintenance actions need to be escalated to device operators. Empowering also device operators with the remote access to perform complex software-related maintenance actions avoids substantial costs and allows all devices in the field to be maintained centrally, reducing thus the risks. Ubuntu Core offers a recovery mode that can be activated manually when booting or remotely via command line or an API call. In that recovery mode, maintenance operations can be done. Snapshots is another key feature of Ubuntu Core related to maintenance, allowing to back up all the data of the applications so that it can be restored in case of corruption or malfunction. The two other major features present in Ubuntu Core 20 are related to security. Computer and devices are really vulnerable during the boot process if they are not secured. The kernel, hardware peripherals, and user space processes are all initiated at boot, and any vulnerability in the boot firmware can have cascading effects on the entire system. In the case of an attack on boot firmware, damages can be so deep that often hardware replacement is the only fix. In an industrial IoT scenario, this means considerable downtime, manual maintenance, possibly at several locations, and capex for hardware replacement. With secure boot, 
the integrity of the boot firmware must be proven before trust is established in user space processes. This requires a secure mechanism to establish integrity. Such a mechanism should be implemented into low-level computer initialization firmware like the BIOS. Validating the boot process integrity at this low level assures that a device has started up in a secure state. Data security and integrity can be achieved by storing the secrets in secure hardware elements, which are also called trusted platform modules, TPMs. With full disk, en disk encryption, every firmware da and data partition are secured cryptographically. The process of encryption is done automatically at first boot, typically during factory onboarding stages, and this encryption is done with the private keys stored in the hardware TPM. At any point in the workflow, the integrity of signed data can be validated and shown the integrity prior to applying software and firmware updates, for instance. So with this, we have finished with the description of what Ubuntu Core is nowadays, but are there more features to be added to future releases? The answer is yes, of course. We have a vocation of continuous improvement, and so we are always thinking on the next cycle features. As most of you surely know, Ubuntu has a very stable cadence of releases. Every two years, we release an LTS, a long-term support version of all Ubuntu variants, including, including Classic and Core. There are intermediate versions every six months, which are more targeted to developers. The LTS versions have five-year support, which can be extended up to 10 years with the appropriate support programs provided by Canonical. As you can imagine, the next cycle has many challenges. Here you can see some of them, for instance. With secure device onboarding and remote device configuration, we will simplify deployment operations to the minimum, reducing human error with automated tasks. We will continue reducing the footprint so that every embedded device can have Ubuntu Core no matter the limitation of resources it has. Micro cloud support with micro gates will open a great range of new applications too. And finally, last but not least, uh, real-time is a must for time-critical applications such as robotics and automotive, so we are going to put focus on that too. So next cycle will definitely be very, very interesting. So we have reached the end of this webinar. I would simply like to remind you that this webinar is the first one of a series of three. The next two will be more technical and I'm sure that you will find them very, very useful. So I will wait for all of you there. We will also be attending Embedded World where we will have several roundtable discussions, which I think that can be very advisable. And in March, we are also preparing an AMA, Ask Me Anything on Reddit. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed and learned a lot on this webinar. And now it's your turn for feedback.